Hi everyone, this is Sam Gansfried, um, and I'll be presenting um, this work. It's joint work with Connor Laughlin and Charles Moorfield from Arctan Inc. Um, and it's the work was funded um, by DARPA. So a lot of national security scenarios have the following properties. Um, often there are more than two agents, which, you know, may be countries or maybe, you know, patrollers, um, but often there's more than two. They're not necessarily zero sum. There can be some situations where all players lose or all players win or some combination somewhere in between. There can be repeated interactions um, for either a fixed number or some number that's unknown in advance and theoretically could be infinite. And often there are probabilistic state transitions where they take actions and then there's uncertainty over the next state. Um, and so a natural game model for these scenarios is a stochastic game, also called Markov game. Stochastic game um, has the following components. It has a set of stages, um, stage games or game states. It has a finite set of players. Each player has a finite set of actions available. Um, when um, at each state, um, for each action, um, the combination of the players, there's going to be a probabil probability of transitioning into each other state. Some of them might be zero. Um, and then each player is going to get a reward, a real valued payoff um, for each combination of state and actions. Um, so there are a lot of challenges in computing strong strategies in stochastic games. So for one thing, if we want games with more than two players or two player, not zero sum, um, it's peep pad hard and conjectured that no efficient algorithm exists. Now for stochastic games, if we want games with three or more players and we're looking at um, undis you know, discount factor, it's actually an open problem whether a Nash equilibrium even exists. So um, it may not be guaranteed to exist. So there's been some prior research on stochastic game models um, applied to security. These were for two-player games and for looking at Stackelberg and correlated equilibrium, which are both easier to compute than Nash equilibrium. The applications here included adversarial patrolling and threat prediction. Um, now, I'm not aware of any prior research on um, national security game models that were for either more than two players or were for Nash equilibrium as opposed to correlated um, or Stackelberg equilibrium. So I'm going to present a um, new algorithm. It's going to build on some prior approaches that were applied for multiplayer stochastic games um, for a three-player poker tournament um, based on some research I did um, with Thomas Sandholm in 2008 and 2009. Um, which was for a three-player poker tournament. And so I'm going to discuss those approaches, how we build on them, um, and apply them to national security. Um, so the general motivating um, problem, actually, so our, our algorithms and model are going to be very broad, but um, in general, um, motivating problem was um, in this freedom of navigation where there's um, ships, there's blue ships trying to navigate, red ships trying to interfere and obstruct that. And so if the ships encounter each other, um, there's going to be some sort of an altercation. Um, and each, each player is going to have some set of actions. There's going to be payoffs. They might repeat. There can be different numbers of ships of different types. And so the motivation was this problem of navigating freely, um, actually, in, in the South China Sea. Um, but, you know, this could, this could have a lot of other different application domains. Um, and so we're going to call um, the scenario generally a hostility game, um, which has the following components. So first, um, a set of players. So for our game model and experiments, um, we are going to assume that there's four players, that there's one blue player and three red players. Um, which are of different types and of different capabilities. We're going to call them the warship, security ship, and auxiliary vessel um, for concreteness. And each player has a set of actions or moves um, for each... Okay, so for each move of a red player, um, the C function gives a set of 
blue moves that are counter moves um, to that move. So each each set of moves for red player has some some moves of blue players counter those and some don't counter those. I'll, I'll elaborate a little more shortly. For each blue player move and red player, there's a, a probability that blue wins and, and red loses flat out um, if the move is defended against. This is BD. There's also a different probability if the move is not defended against BU. Um, similarly, there's a probability of red success um, and blue failure if it's defended against RD, undefended against RU. Um, and when there's a success, the, um, each player has some payoff they're going to get pi. Um, there's a hostility value associated with each move, um, which is H of the move. And um, finally, there's this kinetic threshold K. Um, and so if the hostilities, um, if the game is not over in a, in a um, victory for a player and they get to this hostility threshold K, um, the game's going to enter what's called kinetic mode and all players are going to get this pay, kinetic payoff pi K, pi called pi with exponent K. Um, and so to talk a little bit about how the dynamics of this game actually work, we're going to model this as a stochastic game with a collection of stage games G sub N, where N is the cumulative sum of the hostility levels of the actions played so far. So initially we're going to start in G0, there's going to be k plus one of these states gk um, with additional terminal states b and r for when if a given player wins now depending on whether a move is countered at a given state um, there's going to be a certain probability for a win for blue or for red and so if there's a win say win for for blue and state gn we're going to just transition to the state b and it's over and if similarly a win for red, we're going to transition to state R and it's over. Otherwise, we're going to go to a new state GN prime, where N prime is now the new sum of the hostility levels of the actions um, taken by the players. And so if they keep doing this without a win and get up to GK, all the players are going to get this kinetic payoff, um, which is you know, going to be a negative number. So you can, in particular, this is not a zero-sum game because in the kinetic mode, for example, all the agents are going to get this negative payoff. For our experiments, we're going to have um, k is 300, and the kinetic payoffs negative 200. The normal win and loss payoffs are going to be plus and minus 100. Um, and so this gives this doesn't give the full set of parameters, but this gives us an, an idea of the parameters, which are these were derived. One of our team members, Connor, um, is has domain expertise, um, has experience um, with military. And so he was um, pivotal in, in creating this realistic game model. You can get an idea of, you know, each player is going to have like a seven or to 10 actions um, for each action. Um, some of them are countered, some aren't. And, and so um, they're going to have different probability um, of succeeding given it's defended or undefended against. Um, and so you can get an idea of sort of the, the players how many actions are available, the hostilities of them, you know, certain actions fire a missile going to be high hostility. Other actions are going to be very low hostility. And um, next slide shows, you know, some of the moves of each, each player are going to be countered by some of the moves of the blue players. And, you know, we came up with this again from domain expertise. Um, and you can see there's three different red players and, and there's one blue player. It's a four player game. And so the high level approach, um, we're going to build on approaches that were used by previous work. The high level approaches here are that we're going to integrate game solving algorithm for computing or approximating Nash equilibrium with um, algorithms for updating the values. And so the game, um, game solving algorithm um, at each we're going to apply it at each non-terminal state. And so the, the core algorithm used previously fictitious play, um, an iterative algorithm where basically at each stay, step, you play a best response to the average strategies of the other players. Um, now, another algorithm that's been applied to multiplayer games recently, counterfactual regret minimization that was applied to multiplayer poker. Um, empirically, 
has, has led sometimes to good performance. It was shown to fail in a simplified poker game. It led to um, strategy very far from equilibrium. And actually, I have a recent um, manuscript that shows that fictitious play generally outperforms CFR in terms of equilibrium approximation. I also have another paper, um, maybe of interest, on a fast algorithm for multiplayer Nash equilibrium that um, in smaller games outperforms them both. Um, the second step is value update procedure. Given these new equilibrium, newly computed strategies, update to the values at all the states, which is going to use variants of MDP solving algorithms, value, um, value and policy iteration. And so the high level algorithm here is essentially we're going to assume that um, we have um, some equilibrium finding algorithm A, some value updating algorithm V, um, and you know, initial some initialization procedure, set of terminal states, set of non-terminal states, and then we're going to repeatedly solve the stage games using A, um, and then we're going to update the values of the non-terminal non states, um, and we're going to repeat this um, until desired um, conclusion. And so here are um, the prior approaches that were presented um, in earlier work applied to poker. Um, this value iteration um, VIFP basically combines fictitious play at, for solving the stage games and value iteration for updating the values. Um, PIFP uses policy iteration for updating the values. And both of these basically ran, they, they had a parameter for the max difference between value updates and for stage game approximation. And they ran these until they got down to that level um, before moving to the next iteration. And so um, we can't prove for VIFP actually, there's a counterexample, but for PIFP it's proven if it converges that um, the strategies constitute an equilibrium. It's not guaranteed to converge, but if it does, um, it's in equilibrium. And so um, I'm going to skip this, but um, policy iteration for our setting. Um, it's worth noting that empirically in the poker tournament, both of these converge. They're not guaranteed to. Um, and technically, the hostility game doesn't fall into this positive bounded model here for policy iteration, but, um, but still, um, the matrix always had full rank. There was a unique solution. It avoids the issues um, that can come from negative payoffs. And so we can still apply the same variance of, of value and policy duration. Um, now, once we've run these algorithms, there was a procedure, um, ex post check procedure to compute um, the maximum amount that a player can gain by deviating, essentially compute the degree of approximation epsilon equilibrium on the degree of approximation of Nash equilibrium in the strategies. And so um, we have a new algorithm that is going to generalize these um, in, in one advantage is that it's going to be parallel. And we notice both of these algorithms can be parallelized um, in order to obtain a linear speed up in the number of cores. Um, the previous approach is just use a single core and solve each game sequentially. We can also, we have several other improvements um, that we've implemented. Um, one thing we can do is we can use different stopping criteria because the um, the prior approaches, they ran until they got these differences below a threshold. You may not even get, you know, these, these algorithms are not guaranteed to converge. You may never get below that threshold. You could do a variety of other approaches, for example, um, pick a fixed number of iterations and run it for that many iterations or a variety of other things. And so we have our new parallel PIFP um, that um, obtains a, a, you know, linear speed up and um, has custom stopping conditions. And so we, we experimented um, several different variants. We did 25 iterations of the algorithms using six cores. Um, we varied the number of iterations of fictitious play. We also considered a variant, a different variant of fictitious play, where instead of outputting the final strategies, we picked the strategies out of all the iterations that had lowest exploitability, right? Maybe fictitious play does really well at some intermediate step and then does worse. And so we, we um, you can see here, um, I'll, I'll do the analysis on the next slide. You can see here that um, 
some of these converged to, to pretty low exploitability. Some of them didn't. Some of them bounced around a lot. Um, and so in, in overall, we observed the VIFP did not converge to equilibrium, while all the variants of PIFP did. So in the poker experiments, both of them converged. PIFP converged faster, but they both converged. Here, VIFP did not converge. Um, using the minimum exploitability version of fictitious play barely changed the performance, and so it's not worth the additional overhead of recomputing epsilon each time. Um, we note, you know, getting epsilon equals 0.01 is quite small. It's 0.01% of the minimum possible payoff. Um, we also observe, though, even though the final versions were, of epsilon were quite low, um, there was significant variance in the first several algorithm iterations. Um, even if we used a lot of iterations of fictitious play, you can see here that you really spiked up a lot in the first few steps. And so um, it's important to run the algorithm long enough to get convergence. And so we have this new parallel algorithm for multiplayer stochastic games. I actually have a new manuscript that um, extends this to a generalization where there's imperfect information. Um, and um, it's worth pointing out that these strategies, this is a real domain, a real problem um, of interest um, by domain expert. And um, we can, these algorithms can be represented, the solutions can be represented in a very um, easy to understand way. We have an inter interface here um, that displays, this is both for the perfect and for this newer imperfect information. You can look at the, um, the hostility, the, the, step, the state, game state, the hostility level, and then it outputs for each action what probability you should take it in equilibrium. It's very easy um, to be used. And so we expect that these algorithms can lead to strategies that are readily deployed. Thank you.